lots to talk about, and let's start with the big number. The S&P 500 closing over 5,000, and the Dow Jones coming up on 40,000, just short of that at 39,000. And I have to remember when Professor Siegel, the Wharton professor, said during the middle of the pandemic, I believe it was in the first quarter of 2020, when the Dow Jones got to about 18,000, he made this bold prediction Mm -hmm. that it would be above 40,000 in five years. And look at where we are, Brian. I know it's pretty incredible as far as, you know, if you think about just all the fear that was out there in the first quarter of 2020 with the pandemic, for somebody to come out and say, we'll get through this is kind of basically what he was saying is that, you know, he's famous for the idea of stocks for the long run. And really five Five years in the grand scheme of things isn't that long but when you were going through the pandemic that probably felt like an eternity and then the distance to go from around 19,000 up to close to 40,000 nearly doubling and that doesn't even include dividends right like if you think about the Dow those companies oftentimes kick off pretty good dividends you reinvest those dividends take advantage of the power of compounding you could have done quite a bit better and I will tell you when I started this business in the 1980s I think the Dow was around 4,000, 3,000, so it's become a long ways uh, in my career, but it certainly brings to the top of mind FOMO, or the fear of missing out when people see these big numbers. Oh, it does, yeah, and really when I talk to people in the media, they always tend to call when you're around these round numbers because they say that they're psychologically important, and they are. You know, people take notice because you suddenly turn on CNBC, Fox Business News, Bloomberg, whatever it is, or even on the nightly news, they will talk about when you hit these certain milestones. Interestingly, we seem to hit these milestones much more frequently nowadays. And keep in mind, it used to be that these new highs used to be old hat in the sense that if you're at a new high, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's only down from here. Right. And you think about it, that this is not a two cocktail idea to think about Dow 50,000, because that's really only about 20 percent from here. As you said, we can get to those bigger numbers quicker. So the question remains, why is this happening? And really, there's two things that are happening right now that's just top of everyone's mind. Number one is what the Federal Reserve is doing. And number two, their earnings report Mm -hmm. that we're receiving. Yeah. In terms of what the Fed is doing, they have given some of that pushback against the idea that they need to cut soon and cut all often. Uh, And really, I think the key thing, though, was the messaging around why they can wait. Because the economic numbers have been so much better than expected, they think that there's little risk to waiting a little bit longer just to make sure inflation is indeed coming down. And then it gets to your second point about the earnings numbers. That's some of the evidence that the economic numbers have been improving. We did have an earnings recession last year where you had two consecutive quarters in a row of declines in earnings per share. But boy, that bounce back was pretty strong. So let's dig deep on both of those topics. We started the show with pushbacks. And that really started last Sunday night when Chairman Powell was on 60 Minutes. Yeah, that was an interesting interview. And uh, really, he tried to just restate everything that he's already said before. He didn't really want to break new ground in terms of saying what they might do. It was just to reiterate that they feel like they can afford to wait a little bit longer to cut They want to make sure that they have enough evidence and that the public has enough confidence in them that they have indeed tamed inflation. So when I look at some of the numbers as far as, let's say, on a three-month and six-month basis, the run rate for inflation, I think that the Fed has basically gotten back towards their target. We are sustainably there. We don't necessarily have to worry about another wave of inflation coming. And while the Fed might believe that too, because of how strong the economic numbers have been, they feel like, let's just be on the safe side and wait just a little bit longer. And one of the reasons why people don't feel so great about the economy right now, despite that their 401k plans are going up and they see these big numbers, is because of inflation, because the Mm -hmm. costs have gone up. Over the last three years, they're up about 20%. Everything from your housing costs to fueling your car have gone up, grocery stores. And that's the reason why people are a bit dour on it. You look at what the Fed is saying. They were late to the game for hiking rates. Yep, that's right. They were. And I appreciated that he admitted that. 
Uh, I mean, to me, that actually is kind of a testimony to his character that he will admit when they made a mistake. And they don't want to compound the mistake by making another mistake on the other side of it, right? So they were late to hiking. They don't want to be too late for cutting, but they feel like there's little risk of that. So they don't want to be too soon for right. cutting. And the reason why he says that he's comfortable is because of the fact that inflation is a bit stickier than they thought it would be, and that really comes from wage inflation. It does, which feeds into the services, which is a much bigger part of the inflation basket. It used to be that goods price inflation was a bigger part of what people purchase, but now it's really dominated by services, and there still is that lingering worry about whether or not wage inflation is going to feed into the service sector price inflation. So far, so good, though. 